I discovered DaVinci Resolve's hidden morph effect. The other day, I went out shooting with my Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. Oh my god, this is nuts. It's springtime right now, so the weather's super nice. During the winter time, I kind of hermit. So I'm gonna go out and get some epic shots. When I got home, uploaded the files to my computer, I brought them into DaVinci Resolve, and I was like... Why are all the videos just playing back so fast? I had no idea why. They were just photographs. Oh, I can't believe I did that. And I didn't realize my camera was set to shoot time lapses from the shoot before. So I was just walking around taking photographs, essentially. It was a bummer, yes, but I also was trying to think about how could I utilize what I've got. It's not much, but is there something cool I could do? And that's where I discovered DaVinci Resolve's hidden morph effect. First, I'm gonna show you guys how I discovered this effect and how I used it on the clips during this shoot. Then I'm gonna show you how you can actually apply this in a much better and cooler way to create a more of a glitchy morph looking effect. So stay tuned to the end. So I got home, I selected all of my videos, dragged it into my timeline and realized here we are with all these photographs. So what I did first is I went over to the color page and I added my power grade, which you can actually get linked down in the description. This power grade works on all cameras and all types of footage. Then I apply that grade by selecting all of the clips that I want to put the power grade on. And then I middle mouse click and it will apply that power grade to all of the video. Now, some of these shots were shot in open gate on my cinema camera. And that means that it used the entire sensor readout to capture the information. So it leaves these bars on the side like this. So what I'm going to do is just highlight all of the clips, zoom in, and then that way it fills up the entire frame. You'll want to highlight all of the photographs and right click and select new compound clip. Then right click on that clip again and select render in place. I'm going to render at the source resolution and the format Kodak and type is fine left default. Then select render. Select your render location and then select open, it should automatically render in place. Now we have this rendered video file that plays back extremely fast. So then what you'll wanna do is hold down Command or Alt on your keyboard and push R to bring up the retime speed. Or you can right click on the compound clip and select retime controls. Then go ahead and come up here to the right hand corner of the clip and drag it and you'll see the percentage changing down here in the middle of the clip. Now, depending on how many photos you have and how long you want this effect to be, you'll have to adjust this to your personal taste. The slower you do it, the longer the effect will be in between each clip. I'm gonna do 7%, and that essentially creates a slideshow of these photographs. Once you've retimed your clip, come up here to the right-hand side under the inspector and come down to retime and scaling. If it's not open, just double click on it and this drop-down menu should show up. Under the retime process, click on the drop down option under project settings and select optical flow. Then under the motion estimation, you can click on the drop down menu. And what I'll start off with is speed warp better. Now this is pretty intense on your CPU. It'll require a lot of your computer's resources. So what I do, I come up here to playback and under my render cache, I have user selected. And that means anything that you right click on and select render color cache output, DaVinci Resolve will render that specific clip. I don't do smart cache anymore because I don't need to necessarily cache every single video in my project, just clips in composites that really require a lot of computer resources. Now, while I let that render, I'm just gonna let you know, depending on what you select under the motion estimation will kind of determine how the morph effect affects the clips. Now with the motion estimation speed warp better, this is the kind of morph look that you get. I think it's really cool. It is kind of all over the place just because I was trying to get shots of random things. So you'll see here soon how you can actually make it look cooler. Now, if you actually come over here to the motion estimation and click on the drop down and select speed warp enhanced better, you'll get more of like a morph transforming kind of thing, kind of like the morph transition preset. It's not exactly the same, but it does kind of morph the video into itself a little bit differently. It's also significantly easier for your machine to play this back and render out. Now, if I select standard better, this almost like kind of morphs it in a more pixelated distortion kind of way. I kind of like this almost better than the speed warp. But like I said, you have to kind of come through here and just kind of select what you think is cool. Now, this is speed warp faster. It's kind of like a mix between standard and the speed warp better. 
just different kind of distortion effects in between each thing. It's kind of cool. It, I think it might be a cool way to kind of talk about past memories or maybe like you had a dream or something. I don't know. Maybe you could just make some random kind of effect in between for a transition. There's so many different ways you could use this. Before we move on, I'm going to show you how we can make this a little bit spicier. What you can do is duplicate this clip and then come over here to the left hand side and under the open effects, type in edge detect and then just drag that on top of this clip. Now you can leave it as default using the RGB edges as the top layer. But in order to get this effect to blend in with the one below it, you have to change the composite mode of the clip on top. So in the inspector on the right hand side, if you come under composite, you can select add. And that starts to add a little bit more sauce to it. Now, if you want it to have one cohesive look, like if you want to have a color, you can come back here over to the effects and select grayscale edges. And then you can actually select a color that you want the edges to be. So you can come over here to the color wheel and just kind of pull this color wherever you would want it to go. I'm a big fan of teal. You can start to create some really cool morphing effects. You can obviously change the edge width to really create some cool distortion effects. You can change the brightness, the blur. And then if you want to get pretty heavy CPU processing, you can select the pre-process filter and half edges. You can keep the light side or the dark side. So as my machine is rendering this and is about to explode, I'm going to show you a little preview of what this looks like. Kind of cool. I feel like you could use this in a lot of ways. I don't know. I just, like I said, I kind of just discovered this and I just think it's really cool and I'm just kind of playing around with it now but you can add all kinds of effects to this top clip and it kind of just makes the whole thing a little bit more morphy and glitchy and kind of cool and unique you know I've never seen anyone do this if you've been following along up until this point some of you are probably like how come DaVinci Resolve is not recognizing my photographs? I'll show you how to do that once we get back from shooting. This video is possible because of today's sponsor, which is a game changer in the world of content creation, Envato Elements. It's your one-stop resource for everything you need to bring your projects to life. With a vast library of templates, stock footage, music tracks, and more, Envato Elements has got you covered. What's even better? You can use these assets commercially or for personal projects, even after your subscription ends. Elevate your creations with Envato Elements today. So we just got to the shooting location. It's not necessarily like the best time of day to be doing this, but this is just for an example. So what I'm gonna show you how to do in the next couple minutes is shoot photos to make this effect look a little bit more cohesive. Regardless of what the subject is, it could be a person, which this could look really sick if you're doing portraits or any subject. In this case, it's gonna be my car. What you wanna do is you wanna keep the subject in the exact same place within the frame. Now we can move things around in post-production a little bit. Try to keep the focal point of every single shot within the same exact place inside your frame. So I'm using the Sony a7S III and the Sigma Art 24 to 70. With car photography and portraits, I typically try to keep everything around the 50 mil mark just because I don't want to distort the car for what it really looks like. So everything I'm gonna shoot today is gonna be 50 or higher. I'm gonna first start taking some wide shots and then as I take more photos, I'm gonna get closer to the car and start doing detailed shots. Think about how you shoot a hyperlapse. Now this isn't exactly like a hyperlapse, but you will apply the same techniques to shooting for this effect. Here are all of the photos I just took during that shoot, but you can't just drag them directly into DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing you wanna do is in the folder where the photos are, you wanna create a new folder and let's just call it converted. Then what you'll wanna do is download Adobe DNG Converter. I'll leave a link down in the description. Once you open up the Adobe DNG Converter, what you'll first wanna do is select the folder where the photos are. Then you want to select the folder where you will save the converted photos. Go ahead and select the converted folder that we just created. Then select Convert. Go ahead and click the converted folder and drag it into DaVinci Resolve. Then I'm gonna zoom it in so it fits the frame of the project. And when I play this back, you will see I have a bunch of photos once again. So you can either choose to cut out certain sections to apply this effect, or you can do it to the entire video. I'm gonna find the section where I rotate my, around my entire car. I'm gonna do some color correction and add one of my LUTs real fast. Now I'm gonna right click, render in place, just like we did before. And then I'm gonna apply the effect just like I showed you earlier in the video. Now what's really cool is now when you shoot it like this, it kind of just blends together and everything just looks super cohesive. 
So this is a great example of keeping everything cohesive and in, in the same exact part of the frame. I kind of do this parallax around the Tesla logo on the hood of my car. The entire thing was stretched to about 44% of the speed. But if I really stretch out maybe these six or seven photos and then I apply this effect, it creates such a unique look in the actual subject and the focus of the frame stays pretty normal, but everything else is shifting around it. I think it looks epic. And when you have continuity throughout all of your shots, you end up with beautiful looking morphing kind of things. And it's just super unique. With this, I added some rotation to the shot and it kind of makes like a really cool back and forth rotating sequence. And so when you apply the effect to this, I'm gonna slow it down quite a bit. I'm gonna try selecting enhance better just to play it back. You get a pretty interesting, not super jolty morph. This is enhanced faster, but I actually kind of like the looks of speed warp faster and speed warp better. Speed warp faster almost is like the perfect blend between the two. So remember, keep the center point of focus in the middle of the frame and everything else will be morphing around it and create this really unique effect. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe. Love you guys and I will see you in my next video.